Hey everyone, Rob here, and we got updates on the earthquake situation, the volcanic eruption. It's just a day after day, more updates and more news coming out of Iceland. And first, what we're looking at here is these are some maps from the meteorological office here in Iceland showing yesterday's earthquakes. And there was numerous ones and, and obviously a debate on what con constitutes a large earthquake. Um, but this was felt in a lot of places in Iceland and through the capital area and was in a bit of a different area than we saw from all the earthquake swarms that happened back in November. But we can see the area of influence and how it was felt from these maps here. And then, of course, from here, we have a lot of questions on what's going on after the earthquake. How is this all connected together? Is it connected or is it just another series of earthquakes that Iceland has, uh, you know, we just have day in, day out? But speaking about earthquakes, I mean, let's take a look first at where we're at. And if we look at the Reykjanes Peninsula area, we can see down here at this lower map, this graph here, uh, we have the earthquake spikes, of course, that happened yesterday on Wednesday. And before that, there was not much. And after that, again, there's not much going on. So we had, uh, of course, a couple aftershocks and things like that. And then it's quieted back down. The land rise is still continuing, although, again, a slower speed. And as this pressure builds up, it has been stated by a lot of specialists, you know, volcanologists and scientists and meteorological office, that we should expect to see and feel more seismic activity from all of this. Uh, and first off, we have Armin Hulsson. He's Again, he's a volcanologist. And he's saying now that it's necessary to look at building defenses in the westernmost areas of Hapnafjörður, which is part of the capital area right by Reykjavik. I mean, if I drove from where I am in Reykjavik to Hapnafjörður, I think it's, what, five, ten minute drive at absolute most. Um, I could walk there. You know, we have uh, a lot of places right near Hapnafjörður, and of course that's in, in the area towards the airport. He's saying that eruptions can start almost anywhere in this sort of Blaufert system and the crucifix system and, and all of this rakiness. He's saying this is this is one big danger area. He says the big earthquake that happened yesterday means the release of tension in the rakiness peninsula has started briskly or really quick. And as a result, as it starts getting ready for the next wave, because you know, we're looking at it building up pressure and then releasing the tension before the magma reaches the surface. He says that if there is some sort of an eruption in the area where the earthquake occurred, there is a risk that the lava can flow towards Hafnafjörður. And therefore, the next step is to look what kind of fire protection or sort of barriers of lava protection can be installed there. He says he, don't, he doesn't think there's even a question about it. There's too much built up in Hafnafjörður. And if you've been to Iceland, driving through, you would see that, uh, I mean, of course, there's a lava field all the way up into Hapnafjörður. He says there's too much built up there. It's an important industrial area. It's a huge and you know booming residential area. And, and that's definitely a cause for concern. So he's not the first volcanologist to call for attention to be paid to this capital region during these volcanic events that are currently underway. We also had Harald Sigurdsson recently called for a risk assessment for the entire capital area. And then we have a second volcanologist here, which we all know, uh, Thorvald Thorson. He says that the large earthquake that shook again yesterday indicates to him that the seismic activity is slowly moving to another area, which is Trolldinga. It's a very hard word to say, which is located in the middle between the capital area and Grindavik. And we can take a look here where this is. We have uh, actually Reykjavik is up, up kind of little bit off of the the map here at the top top left or top right sorry and then we have of course Grindavik towards the bottom uh, so this this is sort of moving from we can see Grindavik we see Fagrasfell we see the latest eruption in Stor Skogfell and uh, and so we see it kind of moving up along this system uh, up there now he says a quake is not an indication that anything big is going to happen in the region in the coming months it's you know, just one that measured 4.5, so-called, you know, light earthquake, I guess. And this type of earthquake means that a release of tension in the area, not necessarily that magma is moving 
where these earthquakes are occurring. But he says that there are various signs that the seismic activity is moving from Svartsengi and Fagresvelt towards this other area here where we have Trolldinga. Uh, it's part of the Krusevik system uh, and it, it erupted 800 years ago. Uh, and during that time, lava at and other areas were formed. Um, so this is definitely not a place that's free from eruptions. Of course, there's a lot of stuff there. But he says it is difficult to predict far into the future. Although activity is beginning to shift, it could take years, decades, who knows to get everything up to the point that it, it is going to erupt. It's not like anything big is going to happen there tomorrow, he says. Uh, not in that specific area. But he says the new reality that we have to live with is that this is an increased situation in here. He's, we've entered a period of volcanic eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And he says, you know, with regard to the other one in Svartsengi and Grindvik, he says the fact that the land has slowed down and the land rise has slowed down in that area could indicate that something is about to happen. Uh, and it may indicate that we've reached such a high pressure that the crust below has started to stretch so much that it's almost reached a breaking point. But if it does break and a crack forms, magma can come up from the ground, cause an eruption. And uh, he thinks in case of, it, uh, of an eruption, it's not going to be too large. It's going to be a small amount of magma that's sort of stored below. And uh, yeah, he says it's a pretty small volume of magma, six to seven million cubic meters of magma. He doesn't think it's going to be a big, you know, flow of magma coming up to the top. But, uh, you know, he's talking about it going towards towards Reykjavik, towards Hapnafil. We have a bunch of other people. But then in the news, of course, the director of civil defense, he thinks it's premature to start building defenses in or around Hapnafil. And he thinks work is being done on a risk assessment due to the risk of a volcanic eruption closer to the entire capital area. And uh, of course, land has continued to rise in Spotsengi. Uh, and of course, the earthquake that happened, so all of these things sort of edging, you know, the earthquake was closer to the capital. Everything's getting closer and closer to the capital area. Uh, and we had about 640 earthquakes in this area, but Vidar Reynason, who is the Director of Public Safety, Department of the National Police, he says this, now is not the time to discuss building some sort of defensive barrier for the capital area. You know, they're still doing a overall risk assessment due to the risk of the volcanic eruptions over in the area, with more towards Grindavik. And all of these risk assessment works on volcanoes in Iceland it began in 2012 and uh, has been worked on ever since then. It's happening in several places. And, uh, you know, of course, the capital area is something that is in mind, but not necessarily the first thing that they're going to be working on. Now, again, several volcanologists have called for a risk assessment to be carried out. And he really is surprised that they don't know that work is already being done on it. So he knows that it can erupt to some degree uh, in certain areas. And they're doing simulations of lava from these places and things like that. But the risk assessment is the basis of everything that they make decisions on. So he says now is not the time to be building defenses. But of course, they're always mindful of what's happening in and around the capital area, as well as other places in Iceland, because it's a very volcanic country. Blue Lagoon, no surprise there. They have decided to extend the closure until January 5th, uh, which is a couple days, you know, two days after that they originally done, like did it. And uh, the last time that they basically opened was December 17th, the day before the eruption began. And then they closed again on the 19th. Uh, so they're just constantly keeping it closed. I feel bad for everyone that has something booked because it's sort of like January 3rd. They say they're going to open, you know, January 6th or, you know, whatever it is. And who knows if that's going to happen because that's only in a couple of days. Uh, but of course, they're eager to open back up to the guests uh, as their estimated revenue loss, according to uh, Morgenblatt, which is a news agency here. The estimated loss is between 4 to 4.5 billion Icelandic. So, 
of course they want to they want to make sure that they reopen and not only them tourism companies in Grindavik are also really eager to reopen their businesses uh, and this is all according to the tourism minister Lilia Alfredsdottir uh, she's met with tourism companies in the area and she said it's important that a further risk assessment is issued for the area in order to be able to start all of these tourist operations again. For example, the Blue Lagoon, which again has been closed since basically the beginning of November. She thinks it's important to think about the future of Grindavik and mentions that the meeting that they had, you know, here pictured from uh, MBF, all of that meeting was was this purpose, was talking to them about how they can, you know, reopen. And when, when she was asked, she said it felt good to feel the power of the community and everyone coming together. But Again, with assessment maps, assessment maps from the Reykjanes Peninsula area, it's uh, it's a little bit difficult to to say, yeah, let's go and open, especially when we're getting more seismic activity and the increased chance of an eruption as pressure builds up. But of course, according to geophysicist Freysen Sigmundsson, the high pressure that's building up in Svartsengi's volcanic system can lead to an eruption with little notice. And this is all part of the reason why I think they're not opening anything up yet. Now, he said in an interview on uh, you know one of the morning radio shows here that uh, it's impossible, just like the day before and the day before that, to predict when the eruption is actually going to occur. There is a high pressure in this volcanic system under Svartsengi, and it can lead to magma movements and magma tunnels or even eruptions from basically... No notice at all. He says that uh, it's not excluded that a different sequence of events will take place. And it's not certain that this is going to be happening in the next couple days. Uh, but we still need to be prepared for it. He says the land there has risen so significantly since the last eruption in, in December. That he's actually seen signs that he believes are most likely long-term ones. And that we shouldn't surprise anyone that there's going to be another eruption in the near future and uh, more seismic activity so we're going to see exactly how all of this plays out but here again you can see Kelir is of course uh, just sort of a mountain point and then uh, some of these but we have all of these recent eruptions in this area towards Grindavik and now they're kind of shifting along along this area so well it's anyone's guess basically what's going to happen I know that a lot of people are predicting that uh, it's going to be within days that there's going to be an eruption. And uh, given that we just had an earthquake out of the blue, as well as signs of what looked to be what it was before the last eruption, we're seeing that here in the seismic activity. So uh, definitely stay tuned because any moment we can get another eruption here in Iceland. So that's all the news. It's actually a bit more news than I thought it was going to be. A bit of a longer video. I hope you stuck through it because there's a lot of information to go through. Again, leave anything in the comments that I may have missed. I'm, uh, I'm sort of scouring through everything, getting all the information I can to present to you in one way or another. And uh, of course, if there's another earthquake or an eruption, hopefully I'll be able to bring that right away to you and, uh, and get that information out. So thank you so much for watching. As always, leave stuff in the comments, subscribe, share, do all the, the regular YouTube stuff. And uh, thank you again.